And you started speaking about something, Dennis, that I thought was very important and, and making sure that everyone is good, are good stewards of the dollars that the public contributes because there are agencies that receive increases, some who end up being cut. Can you give me some examples of how this happens? Because you said they've got to show their outcomes as they put in the paperwork when they made application to United Way. So oh, everybody yeah. doesn't always stay in there. Right. I'll say one of the ways of being good stewards is we realize we don't want any one agency too dependent on one funding source, namely United Way. So we don't want to account for any one agency's funding more than 40%. So we've actually had to cut a few agencies to help kind of force them to get down to that 40% of funding level so that way they can generate and demonstrate that they have other funding sources they can tap into. And one of those happened to be a great organization called the Arca Mecklenburg. They serve the developmentally and mentally disabled. Um, but we just had to make a hard decision that we wanted to lower the amount of funding that the United Way was making up of their budget. Yeah. So that was a tough decision, but definitely a worthwhile organization. We look forward to them being a continued funder partner for years to come. Doing these types of guidelines, though, you've seen agencies be able to tighten up how they operate because of United Way saying, we need to see the outcome of what you're doing. You've seen them tighten up, haven't you? We've seen them, and we can even give you some examples. One organization called Charlotte Family Housing Mm -hmm. actually was a merger of three organizations that we used to fund, and they've been able to demonstrate that they can serve 35% more clients than what they are serving as individual agencies. So it's impressive numbers like that where we want to highlight those agencies that have the strong outcomes but have the organizational efficiency to be able to provide the services. So we're seeing more people actually benefit from these dollars that the United Way distributes because the United Way is saying, make sure you can show that you're using them in an appropriate manner. So the number of people who actually benefit has increased as well, hasn't it? It has, um, but you'll also see that, for instance, the free store, which is a crisis assistance ministry, we have now more organizations directing their clients to the free store crisis assistance. So what we want to make sure we don't do is double count. Mm -hmm. So we're showing them as a client, for instance, of the men's shelter, so we're not showing them the client of the free store, although they're getting the clothing and other needs from the crisis assistance free store. But yes, we have been able over the last year to address the influx of those who face economic hard times. And unfortunately, we've had way too many in our community. We have seen a little bit of leveling off. If you see the numbers going through crisis assistance, they're able to get a little bit more stable instead of always doing what we call triage and trauma at their financial services center. Mm -hmm. So we have seen a little breather in our agency, but we're serving over 325,000 people in need in our community with the $16.5 million that are being allocated this year. You know, Dennis, it brings me to that point of the folk who actually give the dollars. And I used to always call this the radio altar call. But before you can even make an altar call, you got to make sure of what you're asking folk to give. And you're getting ready for gearing up for next year's campaign. Is there anything that you're going to do differently or how do you approach it? Do you say here is our in broadcasting, we say pop the proof of performance. So what's the pop that you give to the public now to say this is why you should continue to support the United Way? Well, you know, when you approach someone for dollars, you always want to appeal to their interest. And so whether someone has a tender heart for children or youth, or Mm. whether they want to see someone to make sure they have a roof over their head, or if they have someone who's suffering some type of health illness, we want to make sure they know that we have agencies serving all those needs. So if they have a specific area they want to give, we have the outlet for them United Way. United Way is clearly the most efficient, effective way to give because people have more than one issue. Yeah. If you have a homeless person, they may have kids who can't get food. You may have kids who have school issues. And so we have three, four agencies serving one family, depending on how many members are in that family. And so we can make the case in your workplace, or if you're an individual who wants to give, that we have an effective way to put your dollars to good use, and you can be assured 
that they're generating the outcomes to improve our society.